Hello, everyone. This is Shuck and Not Stirred, and I am here joined by George of Ravel Games. We're here to talk about Love Struck, the new upcoming dating show board game coming soon. Kickstarter start goes live on February 14th. There'll be a link to that down in the description. Um, George, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm George. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Ravel, and we make what we like to consider super nicely designed and thoughtfully designed party games. Um, so they tend to be super social and they tend to basically really get you talking and get you to like learn about the people around you. Um, Rabble started a couple of years ago, I, uh, probably basically right before the pandemic. Um, and then since then, we basically uh, kind of grew and released, you know, more games than original game of just Rabble. So um, that's where we're at now. Um, I think we have basically five games now released. And then Love Struck is going to be our newest game that we're super excited about. It's a social deduction game. Uh, meaning you're basically trying to figure out like, you know, why everybody else, what's everybody else's secret motives. But it's also inspired by reality dating shows. So the idea is that you're on the show trying to figure out who on the show is here for the right reasons and trying to find love and who on the show is here for the wrong reasons and just trying to get famous. All righty. Um, and that's a really good segue to go into this. Uh, what inspired you to make Love Struck based off of what you have previously put out? Things like Ravel, uh, Ravel, uh, Travel Edition, as well as, I believe the third game was, it was, uh, asking questions hey. regarding the, Sparks. I, I, yeah, Sparks. I looked at yeah. your page and I completely blanked on the name. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Yep. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, so I think two things kind of led to the idea of Love Struck, which is that, um, on one hand, I've been bouncing around this idea of like, I really wanted to make a social deduction game and I really want to make a social deduction game where you don't necessarily play as teams, but you're trying to figure out everyone's intentions, but you're not necessarily, there's not necessarily like good guys and bad guys. I've, I've loved this idea for a while. Um, it's something that I've been kind of kicking around for a very long time um, as a kind of game designer. At the same time, um, obviously COVID hit and during COVID, I watched a ton of reality TV with my girlfriend. So like Love Island, Love is Blind, uh, perfect match at the bachelor you, you name it i've seen basically as they're all, <laughs> all of them right <laughs> um so we were kind of like um like discussing like uh as part of our annual plan like hey here's this idea i've been kicking around i just want to find like a theme for it right and then my girlfriend was actually one who suggested, suggested it, like oh why not rally tv i'm like and it, immediately that it's clicked i was like this is perfect this is exactly what we're looking for right because what better way to kind of have a game where everybody's in it for themselves than reality TV, where it feels like people are actually in it for themselves. And immediately, I think all like a lot of the components of the game or a lot of the kind of core idea of the game really started clicking. I um, mean, that's how Love Struck came, came to be. Alrighty. And you brought up the core gameplay ideas. That kind of transitions to my next question. What was your biggest hurdle during the R&D stage for Love Struck? Yeah, no, this was, so we had the kind of the core idea down, but actually took a ton of testing to try to figure out like how to make Love Struck super compelling and super fun. Um, and I think the biggest challenge for me for Love Struck is on one hand, I really wanted a game that had a lot of depth and I want um, a good amount of strategy that makes it feel unique and really have this tension of where you have to constantly decide between whether you're going to make choices that are beneficial for yourself or beneficial for the group, right? Like that's kind of the core tension of Love Drug. But on the other hand, I really wanted a game that is super accessible, super approachable, and super easy. So trying to, the game designer me really wanted to create like a game with a lot of depth and a lot of different types of complexity and a lot of super interesting choices. And then the, I would say like the marketer or the person who wants to make, also make a super accessible game in me, also want to make something that's like super easy to learn. I think those two uh, parts of me kind of like battling out um, and trying to make a game um, to kind of turn Love Struck to where it is now, which I'm super happy with it, where I feel like it is a game that does have a lot of depth, but at the same time, it's also still a game that you can teach to people who are not necessarily gamers. Alrighty. Now you bring up the idea of like easy accessibility for playing. What has been the overall reception to the general public when you have been showcasing this at events like PAX Unplugged, for example? Yeah, I think the uh, I think this reception has been really, really strong. We had an like a really not only just a really you know positive time just kind of showing off the game, but the feedback that we've been getting, the excitement people get, it's, it's been unbelievable. So I'm really excited for the game. Um, and I think there are kind of two parts to it. I think one part is there are definitely a lot of people who kind of see our design, 
see the theme and like, oh, a game about reality TV. I love the box design. I love all that. And just immediately gravitate towards it, right? Because I, um, if you've seen any of our other games, we do have this sort of unique and distinct design that's cohesive across all our other games. I think that part has been super interesting. I think the other part, uh, then there are some people who are like, oh, reality TV, social deduction. Hmm, I don't really see how that plays out. How does that work? And then we start explaining it. We're like, oh, like, wait, some people are here for the right reasons. Some people are here for the wrong reasons. And you have to win depending on who you couple up with. And it's not really a team game. You have to win individually. I think those people who are like more mechanics driven really light up because they're also super excited by the idea of like, oh, so it's kind of like, you know, other social deduction games, but you're really in it for yourself. We're like, yes, exactly. And then they immediately get it and um, seem to really like the concept as well. But I think that's kind of been the reception. Uh, but overall, it's been super, super positive, um, which is why I'm really personally excited for the game to come out. I know I was one of those people who was very confused on that concept. And I think it was one of your team, it was one of your other team members that was explaining mm -hmm. it. And I was like, oh, this is actually really neat. I've never seen this before in a tabletop game. Um, but you actually answered one of my my next question earlier. What yeah. dating shows inspired you when developing Love Struck? <laughs> yeah. No, I think, uh, I mean, I've watched a ton, so it's all had a lot of inspiration. I would say the one that probably has most inspiration is probably, um, I think, Love Island slash Perfect Match by Netflix. Um, because in those types of shows, it's like everybody's trying to date each other and couples are formed, couples break up, new couples form, and it's kind of, it's kind of like a constant state of flux. Um, so I think that part, I really like those shows because it's you don't, you never know what's going to happen next, right? There's always a new bombshell or another kind of plot twist that happens on those shows. Um, so I think those are really good um, ones that I took inspiration from. A lot of people actually compared the game to a new show that came out called F-Boy Island, which I actually had no idea existed. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, the uh, idea this, is... This is the first time yeah, I'm hearing about it, too. I, I didn't know it existed, but then once we started showing it, people were like, oh, have you... Like, did you take this from the F-Boy Island? You're like, no, I didn't know, don't know what this is. And so, then you look um, into it, it's I, like, oh, my God. <laughs> I know, well, so I looked it up, and basically how it works is that there's, like, three women on the show, and there's a ton of guys. Um, and then it's, I guess some of the guys, or most of the guys, are claimed to be there for love, right? Um, but apparently... Some of the other guys are claimed to be self-proclaimed like f boys right and they just, you know so i don't know the exact premise but i know there's money involved and basically at the end of the show depending on who the woman match up with and they match up with uh, a guy who is i guess there for the right reasons you know they can split the money but they end up with someone who's an f boy i guess the f boy keeps all the money so <laughs> i thought that was a super interesting premise I'm like oh that's actually very similar to what we're trying to do um but it's an actual tv show which is hilarious it's like, man, this seems really familiar. I wonder where they got the yeah. idea from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And I think it came out exactly the same time. So we like, it was, it's just such a funny coincidence um, yeah. when I saw that it actually existed. Um, but yeah, no, um, my last question is what is on the timeline if there is one following Love Struck for Ravel Games? I noticed that you had some things on your website, things yeah. like I think it was Growth, which looked like a plant based game similarly. Mm -hmm. But anything else that you want to talk about going forward after yeah. Love Struck? Yeah, so I think with Love Struck, we're launching on the 14th, and our hope is that basically, fingers crossed, uh, beginning of August, we can start getting games out to people, right? And so that's kind of our immediate thing we're focusing on. But then what we actually also have in the background is a game that we're tentatively calling Calm. It's a very unique game because it's obviously not a traditional game board game in the sense that like hey you have an objective you're trying to like beat other people at the game right it's actually a game we're actually working with a therapist on it's all about managing stress so it's like adventure-based game so the core idea is that like every day you're flipping over cards you're revealing the story that kind of unfolds um where you are kind of main character or the hero of this story and then as you want to as you progress through the story to progress you actually have to complete tasks but the tasks are in real life so you have to do like breathing exercises or learn about journaling or learn how about how to deal with cognitive distortions. And we're working with, like I said, a therapist. So just have, it's very much grounded in like a CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy curriculum. By the end of the, I think the 30-ish days, you basically complete, complete a whole curriculum um, that makes you, you know, that improves your mental health and tells you a little bit more about how to manage stress in your everyday life. So a little bit, definitely a departure from our normal games, but something that we're still super excited about. Um, because I think we just think like mental health is such a hot topic right now um, that like I think everybody can use a little bit more help uh, to handle. Yeah, no, I am genuinely intrigued by that. Psychology was always one of the big things that had me in the school system. Um, 
And then I think there was another one after that. I think it was called Growth. Yeah. So then we also have a couple more games that kind of like working. Um, that look down a little bit more down the pipeline that we're kind of like still figuring out. One is actually called Sprout, and it's a plant based that's game. It, that's yeah, exactly. So it's a so we have. The general idea is that like you're trying to take care of houseplants, um, and then you also have other roommates that also have tried to take care of houseplants. So while you would want to keep everybody's houseplants alive, you really only care about your houseplants, right? So it's a sort of an interesting, as you can kind of tell, we love the games where you have to interact with other people, and we also love the games where there might be multiple winners or losers. So in this case, it's kind of one where at the end of the game, whoever has their houseplants still alive wins. Um, so it's not necessarily like a one person will win or like every, like, you know, type situation. It's like one person can win, some people can win, everyone can lose. So there's a lot of different ways that the game can play out. I know a certain member of my family is going to love that game. <laughs> no, it's pretty cute. I mean, also, and also like, plants are just so cute. So it's like, I think you feel a little bit less bad about like, if you accidentally kill someone else's plant, then maybe if it was like a person or something more serious. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, that's about all I have. Anything you want to say before we... Uh, sign off no i think this has obviously been great chatting with you um you know thank you for the questions we're super excited to kind of share our games um and then if anybody has any more questions you can always uh, reach out to us um, at our website ravelgame.com and then also have their contact information if you want to email us you know send us a message anything like that 